Hi everyone, Paul from Unorders.co.uk. Welcome to part 11 of our Tamiya 132 Corsair build. Um, as you saw last time, we're all ready for primer. Uh, ready to get some paint down. So today we're going to get the primer on. We're going to be using AK's Interactive uh, Grey Primer. AK Ammo, same product, just different labels. Um, I've got both, but this is the bottle. I'm halfway through, so I'll be using this for today. It's the same product, just re-bottled. Uh, I'll use my Harley Steenbeck uh, Infinity CR Plus airbrush and obviously we've got the Corsair here as well. So I plan to get it primed. I'm not going to cover the whole stage of priming because that's just boring to watch. So I will start priming, we'll cut the video, come back on with Dawn. Uh, we'll then pre shade, doing the same process. I start it off, come back on with Dawn. Uh, and hopefully, we start getting some of the base colours down using the beautiful uh, ACAN paint set I bought for this months ago. Uh, also, we're going for the tritone camo, so we've got the white underbelly, the lighter blue side, and the darker blue top. Um, so, hoping in this video we can get the whole thing painted, uh, and then in the next video, we'll come back, add some uh, panel fading, bleaching, post shading, add a little bit of um, interest to the paintwork. Still not 100% decided on what I'm going to do weather and wise. I don't want to batter it up, it, it just seems to be so cliche with Corsairs. They all seem chipped to hell. You know, there's nothing wrong with people on the model and like that, but for me, it's, it's a little OTT. I might add a little bit of chipping here and there, but it certainly won't be a completely beat up aircraft. Uh, it's not my style. I like weathered paintwork. I don't particularly like weathering the hell out of aircraft. So, but we'll see how we go. That won't be until at least part 12. Um, and that's it. So, like I say, AK primer, the grey stuff. Used to use Vallejo, I'm not a fan of it anymore. Too many problems peeling and whatnot. Um, so stopped using that a while back, started using the AK, had no problems with it at all, it goes on well, it covers well, dries fast, um, dries very, you know, hard as well, which is absolutely superb, so as you can see we've got a half a colour cup, well, two thirds of a colour cup should I say, so we'll pop that on, we're at 24 psi, I'm going to pop the uh, colour cup lid on, <coughs> to save me spilling this everywhere, and as you can see, our paint flow is doing well. So I'm going to put my spray booth on. What we're going to do, we're going to spray the underneath, and I'll do the rest off camera. As you can see on the front, I, yeah, we're going to see over here, I've got foam in the front to protect all the engine. The cowlings are on. Um, we've got the canopy masked off and uh, glued position. So we shouldn't have any problems there. Hopefully, we get no seepage or bleeding through. Um, so always make sure your canopy is well on. Check your flow and then we'll come on and start applying nice light coats. So the key with the primer is don't try and cover it in one go, just get a light dusting on everywhere you can. I'm trying to keep you guys sharp. Quite hard to do, just such a large aircraft. It's going to take a lot of primer to cover this, it's going to take quite a while. As to is pre shading it. So, all I've done there, go on the whole aircraft. And I quite literally just throw a light dusting on. The guy I shot, I do apologise. Like I say, it is absolutely huge, just in. And sadly, in position over here, I can't get the camera any higher. Like I say, it's good. I like nice light dusting. Come back, start applying it thicker. We're bothered with leading edges and trailing edges when we do the top. And we'll go paint the exhaust again underneath. So we're just going to get all the base covered. Let that dry. Come back and do the top. So there we go, that's basically the underneath them. Go a little bit along the front edges. What we'll do now is I'll let this dry and we'll come back once I've primed all the uh, upper surfaces as well. Uh, the beauty of this now is you can see all your filled areas and if anything needs a bit more attention and it doesn't look too bad. There's a little area just on the underbelly there that 
Looks like we have a bit of shrinkage on the filler we used because it has been a long time so any shrinkage has shown so we'll probably do a little bit of work on that. Probably just need a little bit of Mr. Serve set. It is just, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, along this little section here. So you can see where the filler's sunk. If I can, there you go, I think you can see that now. You can just see where it's sunk along there. So we'll give a bit of Mr. Surface there, give it a sand back, get that done. But in the meantime, we will prime the top, let it dry, and we'll come back and do some pre shading, which is going to be quite an epic job on this because there is a hell of a lot to pre shade. Um, <laughs> there's rivets and panel lines everywhere, so it's going to be some undertaking, that's for sure. So we'll be back in a bit when it's all primed and. Um, Get on with the pre shading. Okay, so there's the entire aircraft primed. Um, like I said, um, well, I may not, I'll explain in a minute. I did have a few problems here. Some of the um, filler trunk. Don't forget, I started this in August last year. I've been building for a long time. It's been quite an involved build, and obviously, with video in it, it does take up a lot of time, so it has dragged on a bit. Over that time, the filler trunk just behind the cockpit glass there. And we can spin it around, knocking everything over just along here as well so after the primary went on I could see it really uh, quite in depth to be honest so I took it all back super glue filled it, sanded it all off, let it dry overnight it's the next day now from when I was priming it primed again and we're absolutely spot on now what I did do um, unsure about the weather and what I was going to do I do have about a 10 minute video um, of something I've changed my mind of now what I did do was use alclad aluminium and I sprayed just long here on the walkway on the wing roots. Uh, once that was dry, I then came back and sprayed random patches of Tamiya XF4, which simulates green chromate. Um, I did that. I was going to leave that on. I was going to put water down, rock salt, normal salt, chip it, uh, do the base colour, and chip it off to give that worn effect. Now, the problem with that is it's not as uh, precise as I'd like to be. Like I said before, I don't want this heavily weathered. I do want to weather it a little bit, but not massively. I also did around the cowlins around the front as well. And I think using the salt would have been a bit too much hit and miss, and it's not my kind of style. So what I did, when I was repriming these bits before, I literally sprayed over it and thought, right, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. I'll use a brush, some sponge, and I'll have the chipping afterwards. My reason for doing that was, next step is pre-shading. Uh, when it came to these parts, I couldn't really pre-shade them, because if I did the salt, and then I went in close to the brush, it's going to blow all the salt off. Uh, if I left it, it'd look odd. So I was a bit, right, I'm overcomplicating here, so get rid of that, I'm going to do it a different way. Like I said, I've got about 15 minutes footage of me doing that, um, which if the video is not too long, I'll add it just now. There's a little gap for me I think I've put in. I can probably condense it down to about um, 10 minutes, so if I do put it in, I'll put it in now. You guys can watch it and you can come back in a minute. So I'm pre-shading. So, if not, this just carries on and we go to pre-shading. So like I say, it was Alclad Aluminium, um, Tamiya XF4, and then the grey prime that we've put on already. So we've got our pressure at 25, I'm going to lower it a little bit. We'll take it down to about, about 16, that'll do us for now. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to pre-shade, there's a lot of pre-shade on this, it's going to take me quite a while. That's going to show you me doing a few parts of it and then we'll cut, come back when it's done and we'll start with the fun bit which is getting some of the base colours down at last, something I've been dying to do on this aircraft so really looking forward to it, so make sure your brush is spotless which mine is, as it always is um, we've got uh, Mr Hobby H2 which is flat black so it's not H2, it's H12 uh, it's that well used, all my labels come off where it's been spilled and wiped off and there's not that much of it left now, so we'll have a new bottle soon. You don't need a lot of pre shading, even an aircraft of this big, I'll be surprised if you use all that paint. We're going to thin it 50 50 with UMP thinner, as always. That's perfect. Give it a little, give it a little stir, we'll give it a blow back, and we'll put our lid on. Like I said, there's a lot of surface area on this aircraft. It's going to be one hell of appreciating task. I really haven't been looking forward to doing this at all. But needs must. All adds to the effect once we're done. Now that may be a little bit too thin. 
So we'll come back and add a little bit more paint. Because this paint's getting rather old now, you see me, I always tip my my paint back in. So over time it does thin it. So when we start getting near the bottom of a brawl, a brawl, a bottle. It just starts to thick it there, be a bit too thin. I'll do a try that. So we'll pop the lid on to see if he's getting any um, paint all over the shop. I'm going to put my booth on, which is going to dry us out a little bit. Hopefully, you can hear me. I'll speak up a bit. Put the paint back on the lid, the lid back on the paint rather. And we're going to start on this wing. Like I say, I'll just do this wing and then I'll come back and we'll show you the rest of it when it's all done. And you can see my normal horrendous pre-shading because I really do suck at pre-shading. Check your colour, make sure you get nice thin lines, which we are. Pick a mark and we'll start with just there uh, now. Usual problem with the aircraft moving. You don't want it perfect. My eyes, the more irregular it is, the better it looks. I see a lot of people doing like pencil thin tight lines. I think it looks better when the lines are slightly thicker like this. My excuse, and I'm sticking with it. From time to time, pull your paint through. So, on this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm going to move this over a little bit. On this, we've got main panel lines like those I've just done there, and then this little loads and loads of rivets. Gonna take the time on this. I know the airbrush is in the way, I've just had a good look. There's not much, uh, oh, as he says that now, talk he goes and does that. Never mind, doesn't matter, it'll be covered by paint. Talks and concentrate, so I do apologise. So, there we go, there's all the vertical bars. Now we'll come in and we'll get all the horizontal, which are a bit harder. Make sure your brushes. Pull through. I think to be honest, a little bit thick, but all right for now.
we go. There's one really badly appreciated panel. Well, a load of panels to be honest. So they're all the riveted types. We've also got the straight up bars, which are a bit easier to appreciate. Well, it may look awful, once you get paint on it, you can barely see it. So I honestly do not care what my crew shading looks like at all. And like I say, to be honest, when I've done it in the past, i found the worse it's been, the more random, the more wavy, the better it's look. There you go. So that's it basically, and then you get awkward shapes which are like these. These type here. And then last of all, you've got your, try and keep it in shot, try and put the airbrush on, but... Your parts like that. And that's it basically, so... I'll go around and do the whole aircraft, which is going to take me ages. I will time how long it is, because it is five, 10 past 5 now on... Um, Sunday evening. So, we'll see how long it takes me, and I'll come back when we're done. Okay, so there's all the pre-shading done. Um, it took about an hour all in, which wasn't bad, uh, considering the amount of it. Um, if you go to the overhead one, you can see uh, quite in-depth uh, for <laughs> pre-shading because a lot of panel lines, a lot of rivet lines. Uh, everything you can see there is either a panel or a rivet line. The only place I didn't pre-shade was these areas here because that is just an absolute ton of rivets in each of those uh, sections there so I just gave a squiggle to give it a bit of tonal variation so there's the top um, the sides again not the neatest pre-shading but I'm of the opinion that the, you know, the less neat it is the better it looks once it's painted and underneath is even busier I'm going to go to the side one uh, is even busier than the top absolutely immense amount of pre-shading there and like I say it took about an hour massive eye strain once it was done um, but well worth it because the effect is absolutely stunning so what we're going to do now it's uh, it's pretty late at night it's, it's gone midnight um, I'm going to get the white down the underneath done uh, let it dry overnight so then I can handle the underneath tomorrow morning when we get the rest of the colours down now a while back you may remember uh, me spraying the sea blue on the canopy, the rear canopy sections, this is what we've got. So, take can paint. So, we've got the dark sea blue, the intermediate blue, and the white. So, the white's the underbelly, the light blue is the uh, lower half of the fuselage, and then and the tail and the this underneath of the wings, and the dark blue is the top cover as well. Excellent paint here, can I'm a big, big fan of them, especially thinned with our UMP thinner. They spray absolutely beautifully. I've never sprayed one of their whites before, and as you can see, this is a sealed bottle brand spanking new never been used uh, I've only ever really used that blue and the MiG-29 colours on my Great Wall Hobby MiG so I've no idea what they all paint like especially something as opaque as white but we're about to find out live on camera so fingers crossed it'll work well like I said it's a brand new bottle you'll hear the seal crack there you go so this is my first go explaining and now is there a bubble? I think we've got a bubble in there. Let's make sure it's a bubble and not a big clump of paint. It looks like a bubble to me. Let's just pop it and find out. Yeah, it's a bubble. So, past experience, these things spray absolutely beautifully. So, we'll pop that in. We'll put the lid back on the paint. Now, my trials in the past, I tried it with their own thinner. It worked okay. Not brilliantly. It's actually just water their own thinner. But with our UMP thinner, my, my uh, bottle is well and truly battle damaged now. It does spray absolutely fantastic. It doesn't need a lot of thinner, like 15% thinner, so just a little 
dribble in there, give it a good mix as per usual. So once we've got it mixed, we get that clean, get a bit of tissue, give it a backflow just to get all the paint mixed. Right at the bottom of the colour cup. That'll do me. Right, so as normal pre shading we want to get the base colour down. It's going to be quite hard to show you because it's so big. So, fingers crossed you can see it all. I'll try and keep it in shot as much as possible, but it's not necessarily easy to do. So the colour call that we're going for is this bottom one. So you can see the white rail on the bottom. And then underneath, but these edges of the wings are actually intermediate blue. So we just need to spray it all underneath the bottom of the uh, elevators and just along the very edge. So that gives us our guide. So I'm going to put that there where I can see it. That gives me my rough guide of where we're painting it. Check your flow. I'm going to start putting the paint down thin. Which with past experience, spraying absolutely beautifully. We got our shot, I do apologise, but it's a big bird, it can't be helped. So we're going to light dusting down and come back slightly thicker. For a white paint, someone as opaque as this, and I've been attacked by a moth again. My God. Curse of being filmed by an open window, so I should shut my window, I think. A bit of a pain, but never mind. So she's getting attacked by moths. That's a first, that's for sure. So, like I was saying, for an opaque colour, the coverage is absolutely superb. Really does cover well. Hopefully you're kind of in shot, it's quite hard to do with this thing with being so big. You can see I'm just putting a dusting coat down, getting all our leading edges, trailing edges, we'll do the front here as well while we're on it. We're trying to get the paint down so we can barely see the pre shading showing through. And that's the effect we're looking for. Okay, then there's the white down. Now, what I've done, I've sprayed it all perfectly without all the pre shading show through. Then I've come back with just the same colour white and I've applied it in random patterns. You can see it likes it here. Just random squiggles, figures of eight, no, no uh, panel fading. So I've just added this all along, uh, stupidly on the ends of the wings, which I'm going to paint in a minute, which for some reason I don't know. So we've already had a little bit of weathering to the underneath, which will accentuate with a wash. Probably do a bit of panel darkening, a bit of post shading. We'll do the same with a darker, slightly grey or white. Um, but you see that's gone down really well. The coverage is beautiful. They are absolutely superb paints to paint with. I can't recommend them highly enough. And that white... I know a lot of people, including myself, say the Tambi White's probably one of the best for coverage, but no, this stuff beats it by far. Really easy to paint with, really easy to spray, and it's just gone down absolutely beautifully. 
really can't recommend that stuff enough at all. So what I'm going to do now quickly, we're going to get the intermediate blue one, uh, which is on the insides of these wings here, uh, the tail, uh, the vertical stabiliser on the rear, uh, the rudder, uh, and some parts of the fuselage, which I'll show you quick. So we've just got that patch there, that patch there, the tail, uh, and if I flip it over, these two sections on the wings, like I say, I kind of wasted my time painting that, but never mind. Um, we lost a bit of our pre-shading there now as well, but I did about post-shading later, which I would have anyway, to be honest. So airbrush is cleaned, we've got the intermediate blue, which is this, and it's a beautiful looking blue. Absolutely fantastic, I'm quite eager to see this colour, to see the transition from the white to this blue, so that's why I'm spraying it now. It's, uh, it's half twelve now, <laughs> and on Sunday night, so... Cracking on a bit, but I want to get these done and then tomorrow we can concentrate on the dark blue on the upper surfaces. So, like I say, again, beautiful colour. The pigments are just honestly they're absolutely superb paints. If you haven't tried them, go out and get yourself some. You can get them from several companies in Greece and Finland, the US. And that might put you off of it being abroad, but it's no hassle. I've ordered loads of times, never had any dramas. I know it sounds like it's a long way off Greece and have you, but I've delivered many times, never had a problem in the past. Absolutely superb service. You don't get hit with customs who have been from the EU, so there's no dramas there. And they're about the same price as like your normal Tamiya's and what have you, but they are so much better. Such nicer paints. They really are. The coverage is phenomenal, the colours are beautiful. Uh, properly matched, just all round fantastic paints. So what we're going to do now, rather than masking off, which we should be here, I should prefer to my, I'm just going to paint it and we'll do it freehand. And we'll see how we get on, so let's have a look how these paint. Beautiful again. Once we get to the edge where we want the demarcation, we'll just take it a bit easier. As you can see, I've barely gone over that line there, so that'll do me. It's fantastic. Start building up the uh, cover. Like I say, we've lost our appreciation on this part now, but the end of the world, make sure you get the leaf edges and these racks on the wings got to leave a little bit of white showing through so it gives a little bit of weathering already and then we've got the other side which will cover exactly the same So we'll just spray it willy nilly till we get to where we need and we'll be a bit more deliberate till we get that demarcation. But for freehand, I don't think it's too bad there, not going over this line slightly, but it doesn't matter in the big scheme of things. I'm not particularly bothered. not bad again. So once you get it all dusty covered, come back a bit thicker. Start getting the colour down. As I've just gone and painted my arm, but never mind. Again, don't forget the leading edges. And your trail on edges as well. 
as you can see, it's quite patchy. I'm quite happy there. It's going to take it a little bit back. There's a little bit too much light showing through. But again, we're adding weather and effect with just the paint, which is just how I like to do it. Paint fade in, and we'll come back. On that, we won't really need any lighter colour because we've already got the bleach effect. You can see all along here, which is just by allowing the white to show through. And to me, that looks spot on. So obviously, it's a different colour because when the wings are folded, they're up sideways, so it gives it a camouflage when it's on deck as such. So that's the reasoning behind these wings being this colour, in case you're wondering. I'm very happy with our effect. We need more paint. So pop that down. Grab a bit more, and then we'll do the tail. Quite a hard colour to spray this. I can't really see it when it's going down. So I am quite literally guessing where it is. Again, keep referring back to your uh, colour call out, make sure you get everywhere covered if you need to. Nothing worse than cleaning your airbrush to find, you know, you need to cover another area you've missed. And the beauty of using UMP thinner is if you can see any wax patterns, they dry off straight away. So no dramas with waiting for the paint to dry. We go this tail. So we're onto the side camera now. You can see the white. I'm going to have a quick look at my reference, and I chose it coming up from here. And then trailing up towards the uh, the edge there, like so. And then we are going quite a long way down. So if you do lose your pro shade, yeah, pro shade, don't worry about it. We can add it back in later. It's not the end of the world. There we go. You can see the side where we left the white at the bottom. Just trying to refer back to where the blue, uh, the darker blue comes into it, and I can see where it is. It's quite a rough pattern. Just trying to make sure we leave enough. Come through for it. Once I'm happy with that, we'll spin it round and start on the other side. So I'll get this done and we'll come back in a minute when this other blue's done. Right, there we go then, there's the intermediate blue done, if I can turn it around and show it. On the tail, you can see the transition from the white on the side of the fuselage, and at the front too, and the wings underneath. So what we're going to do now quickly, I've got six minutes of memory card left, 
Uh, we're going to quickly show this being painted, the dark blue. I was going to leave it till tomorrow, but do you know what? Let's just do it now. Get it over and done with. So I'm just going to show the starters being painted, stop it and come back. So I've got enough space on the memory card. Um, I said before about probably showing the, um, the way I did the wings. We may not be able to fit that in. Should have to see how editing goes because we're at nearly an hour of footage already that I need to edit down. So we'll see how we get on, see if we can fit it in. Um, if not, we'll sort something out. So, same mix again, 50-50 mix. Uh, sorry, not 50-50. 15% mix, thinner to paint. So, quite a thin mix. It's quite a thick paint, rather. Get that in, we'll give it a little backflow again. We've got a rather full colour cup as you can see because we're getting quite a bit of paint to cover this once we're done we'll pop our lid on give it a test spray and we can see just how nice a dark blue that is I'm going to open my window a bit hopefully I won't get attacked by moths again just allows a bit of more ventilation we'll knock the booth on I'm going to spray some of this quickly and then we'll come back um, once it's done. As you can see it's a really dark blue. I'm just going to put some a very light coats all over. leading edge. However the appreciation is going to show through this dark world, I do not know. It looks as though it may. So make sure you've got your leading edge, you've got your angle on your trailing edges. You now we need to be careful we don't hit the uh, the white or the blue at the front. Yeah, we can see the pre shading a little bit through there, so that's quite good. We've got three minutes left on the memory card, so as soon as it starts flashing, I shall cut you guys off and we shall come back tomorrow. So, what we'll do now is we'll go out of there and get the other wing done. So it's out of shot guys, it's just so hard to get this thing in shot. Now my memory card, so a minute left, it's flashing. So I'll finish this off, we'll come back in the morning when I've dumped all the footage off this onto the MacBook and I'll show you it in its completed guys. So I'll see you in the morning. Right, so okay, very quickly, get this bit in before we go. This is the end of the video. Uh, as you can see, we've got all the camo on, it's all in, it's all drying. So we've got dark blue on top, intermediate on the side, White underneath, intermediate on the wings. So there we go, that's what's done for today. It's going to be a rushed ending. It's paulfmemorals.co.uk. I'll be back uh, next time for part 12. We'll get some weathering done on this uh, paintwork. A little bit of areas to touch up. We've got a bit of overspray. But you can see the general effect. And what I'll do, I'll put some pictures at the end of the video as well. So thanks for watching today. So it's been a bit of a hodgepodge of me in the spray booth. But all the paintwork's done. That blue is absolutely beautiful. And like I say, we'll be back in part, ooh, I think it's 12. And we'll get some paintwork feigned in and weathering done on it. And like I say, I'll stick some pics up after this. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See you soon.